Okay, so hi there everybody. We're now in our next video on Science, Technology, and Society. And in this video, we're going to talk about the robotics and humanity. Okay, again, robotics and humanity. We're still part of this chapter of when technology and humanity cross. So what is a robot first? Okay. A robot is an actuated mechanism programmable in two or more axes with a degree of autonomy moving within its environment to perform its intended task or what the th what the things wh what are those things that um, it is intended to do so when we talk about degree of autonomy or autonomy in short we are talking about the ability to perform the task that he is uh, created to do based on the current state and sensing even without human intervention okay so it, it can do its task on its own without even us um, controlling it but of course we are the ones programming it okay and we are just saying do this do that or whatever that purpose of that robot is and it, it is it is performing it itself okay so that is what a robot is so we have um classifications of robots so we're going to talk about more 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 okay on service robots okay actually there are two the robot a service robot is a robot that performs useful tasks that is from the word service for humans and equipment excluding industrial application because when we talk about um, robots that did that does industrial application we call it an industrial robot okay industrial robot um it can be classified again into two industrial robots that does you know robots in the factory and we have service robot so robots that, that serves okay that performs tools uh, for us humans and equipment so we're going to talk more on the service robots rather than the industrial ones the industrial ones are um some examples are are in the factories creating the cars they're the ones um helping the 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 man the manpower create the cars for example create the cell phones create lots of equipment but the thing is it's inside the the laboratory okay so for service robots so here they are so we have two main um, categorization again for service robots we have the personal service robot first so service robot which is personal is for personal use from the name suggests it is used for non-commercial task okay non-commercial task usually by lay persons and some examples are here in the pictures uh, this is a lawn mo lawn mower robot okay it does the it does lawn the mow mo it does um, rather mow the law the lawn by itself okay and this is a vacuum cleaner robot okay it, it cleans the floor it cleans it, it vacuums the floor on itself so some examples are you know domestic servant robot automated wheelchairs vacuum robot rob vacuum cleaner robot rather and the lawnmower robot over here and among our others there's a lot more okay but the thing is they are service robots for personal use thus the name okay second we have the professional service robot so this robots the service robots are used for professional for, 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 for professional purposes okay for, by the name suggests usually for commercial tasks not for non-commercial tasks um, usually operated by a properly trained operator some examples are cleaning robot for public places delivery robots nowadays rehabilitation robot surgery robot and we have here one robot here that is cleaning the pool by itself so this is a cl cleaning robot in this case in a pool okay so these are the professional service robots so we have two types again of robots industrial and service and under the service we have professional and personal okay now what are the roles played by robotics so we have here uh, Wally looking at them first is to ease the workload of mankind of course to aid help mankind in in these workloads okay Second, to make life more efficient and less stressful. Okay, I think it is understood that robots can do this because they, they, they don't need manpower. They do it by themselves. Uh, third, they perform complicated activities, okay, what, which, which they are intended to do. Okay? Um, so they can do that because that's what they are intended to do. So they can perform those activities. Um, it, they can be um for pleasure or entertainment happiness in parks and exhibits so one one can be 
can look them with awe every time you see robots because you know they don't need to be controlled okay they don't need to be controlled first hand rather okay at, at, at that very moment so they don't need um the support but they can do the task by themselves so which is you, you can you can you can think of it as, as a wonderful um one of those wonderful um creations of human beings they can be toys which is child friendly so you know there are some mini robots there um in toy stores which can be you know toys and they are also used in movies so but example here is wall e okay so he he um he is a robot also r2 d2 the one before so he's also a robot from star wars here from wall e disney movie now let's have a little bit of throwback in 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 the creation of robotics or a robot so it started with George Devol, I don't know how, if I pronounce it right, George Devol. Um, some um, consider him as the grandfather of robotics. So he is an American inventor known for developing Unimate. So this is Unimate, you're looking at it right now, by this brand, Kawasaki. The first material handling robot employed in industrial production work. So this is one, the first rather, the first industrial robot. So you can see that this is used for 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 industry for the industry use for factories so this is unimate over here created by george devo okay the grandfather of robotics now of course if we have a grandfather of robotics we have the father of robotics and this is isaac asimov okay the father of robotics so he is an american writer and professor of biochemistry at boston university and asimov is the one who created the three laws of robotics. So this is Isaac Asimov's three laws of robotics. So what are these? Okay, so Isaac said that, number one, a robot may not injure a human being or, through inaction, allow a human being to come to harm. Okay, so that's the first law. May not okay, injure a human being. Okay, that's number one. So it should be that robots are safe. Okay, you should feel safe around them. Number two, a robot must obey orders given to it, given it, given by human beings, except when such orders would conflict with the first law. So if those orders are are going to harm people, so that's against the second law. Okay. Third law, a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second laws. So a robot must must exist, must not cease to exist, but it should it should protect its own. Okay? In accordance, um it's not it's not against the second and the first law. Okay, so those are the three laws of robotics by Isaac Asimov. Okay, the father of robotics again. Okay, so that's it for this video. Um, very briefly about um, robotics and humanity. We're still in our part in the when technology and humanity cross. So hopefully you learned something from that. And thank you very much for watching. I hope that you would like and subscribe to my channel. Okay, thank you very much.